In this video, we're going to talk about preparing models in Rhino for 3D printing, specifically checking for holes and exporting as STLs. When 3D printing, it's important that models are watertight or closed, otherwise we can run into problems down the line. Here we have three models. Model A is closed, model B is open, and model C is closed and represents a sort of hollow solid. For now, we're going to ignore model C and focus on open versus closed poly surfaces. Say we didn't know whether or not these were watertight. We can select all open poly surfaces with the command SEL open polysurf. We can also use the command select closed polysurf. Most of the time though, especially if I'm just working on one model, I prefer to use the volume command. We don't actually care about the number here. It just tells us if the poly surface is closed or not. If it's open, it'll kick back a warning. We can try to have Rhino approximate its volume, but because we're just using it to check for holes, we'll hit no. So now that we've determined our model is closed, we can export it as a mesh. Rhino, like most other CAD programs, uses NURBS to model geometry. The form of a NURBS object can be described mathematically, making it ideal for CAD. But if we want to use it for computer graphics applications or 3D printing, we usually have to convert it to a polygon mesh. Meshes are made up of flat polygons, meaning that if we convert a spherical NURBS object to a mesh, there will be some level of approximation involved, as we're forced to convert round surfaces into faceted ones. Again, we'll be covering exporting our model as an STL, but the settings will apply to any kind of polygon mesh conversion in Rhino. To begin, we'll select our model and go to File, Export Selected, and select STL from the dropdown. When we hit save, a window will open up, giving us some options for fine-tuning our mesh. Rhino has a couple different versions of this window, but they essentially do the same thing, by prompting us to specify a maximum value that is inversely proportional to polygon count. Basically, the higher the number, the lower the polygon count, and therefore quality. The lower the number, the more polygons. Most of the time, this level of control is sufficient, but if you find yourself wanting to fine-tune your results, you can find more advanced parameters under Detailed Controls. For now, we'll just hit OK. So now that we understand polygon meshes, let's go back to our hollow model. Now technically, there is no such thing as a hollow object in Rhino. Our Model C is actually made up of two closed poly surfaces. In order to understand how complex objects like this are interpreted by 3D printing software, we have to understand normals. I've already exported C as a polygon mesh and opened it in a software that will allow us to see the normals. Normals are vectors that sit perpendicular to surfaces or polygons. They basically indicate which side faces out. If we look at the enclosed mesh, we'll see that its normals are facing away from the center, the same as the normals on our outside mesh. If it's easier, try to imagine that the normals indicate what side of the polygon is exposed to air. What we want is for the normals on the inside mesh to face towards the center. Let's go back to Rhino and reorient our surface normals to reflect a hollow object. Now, just like polygon meshes, NURBS objects have normals, which can be viewed with the command DIR. If we fix the normals at this stage, they'll be correct when we go to export. The first thing we're going to do is merge the inside and outside surfaces. Because they're not touching, we have to do a sort of illegal merge, where we tell Rhino to combine them, even though it might break the rules. That command is non-manifold merge. Now the two objects are merged, but as far as Rhino is concerned, they represent two outward facing poly surfaces. The command create regions will create a new solid from the region defined by the non-manifold surface. The normals are now facing the right direction and our model is ready for export. That concludes this tutorial on preparing files for 3D printing in Rhino.